But Agamemnon is saying this thing that the cursed is uh, that the sacred is the cursed is something that he rejects, right? He is saying that's not how it works. He says that it is not the logic of the sacred. for the object to be cursed at the same time. What is instead going on, he says, is that it is actually the working of the juridico-political sovereign logic which comes prior and which then later takes the form of this relationship between the sacred and the accursed. That's why he's again and again emphasizing on why the juridical political is more important than this what is what, what anthropologists called the ambivalence of the sacred. So he's rejecting the ambivalence of the sacred and uh, he's or take the example of the Harijan in India. The Harijan, son of God, is the sacred, but it is the accursed, right? It is the cursed one. It has to go and get into potholes and, and clean the drainage of this country. So the sacred is the accursed, but it is not the logic of this ambivalence. It is not something to be understood by referring to the domain of religion or the domain of mythological symbols. Uh, and all of that, rather it is the logic of politics, of sovereign power. And it is only in, only retroactively covered up by this, oh, you know, that is the, that is how religion works or mythologies work. Um, I mean, you can also take an example from, say, uh, why Arjun in the Gita, in the Mahabharata, is the one who is going through this tremendous anguish, you know, uh, that, oh, I have to kill my brothers, you know, oh, I have to kill my family people. Huh? Hey, Krishna, how can I kill my own people? And then you know that now Arjun is fighting there, but his brother Bhim is also fighting. Bhim has no qualms like that. And those people say, oh, you know, Arjun is also a highly wise person. He is very, very intelligent. He thinks. And that's why you say ignorance is bliss. Maybe for Bhim it was there. You know, he just thinks, okay, there's a, these people are like, they've made me, turn me angry. I'm going to like... Kill them now. But Arjun is like going through this. He is in he's also very sacred in that sense, right? He is so intelligent, he's 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 his mind. He's like the mind, you know. Um, but he's also accursed because of that. He's like, oh, how can I do this? Um, so you see this. Um, so for Agamben, that is the thing, you know, he is talking in terms of the logic, logic of juridical power. Um, so yeah, Aztec civilization, the most worthy were sacrificed, you know. So when in the Homo Saka, you will, anybody can kill you. But you cannot be sacrificed. That you can be killed but not sacrificed. Means that you are like an invisible person. You are like a persona non grata. And it is through that that you are as bare life included in the law. Through the exclusion. Now, okay, let's do one thing. Uh, let's go to uh, this section here, um, you know, where he, we know that, and this tension has always been there in this, in these lectures. 
in this class that we are constantly struggling with this with this other notion that of real killing and uh, fake encounters or what is happening to refugees um, the citizen who has no rights stateless uh, homeless refugees um, and that is the state of exception the rohingyas we have nothing and we think of them as the bare life that interpretation i saw is there in akhil gupta and all of that also and when he gives the um, um, the concentration camp as the what is what is it called nomos right sai concentration yeah. camp as the nomos yeah. or something right and then we think that's so true that interpretation you know uh, but we are trying to say that no you know he is also talking about normal citizens endowed with fundamental rights to liberty freedom and all of that that also is bare life in fact that is the bare life that he is trying to say and not just people on the outer limits outer margins those who are stateless homeless uh, those who are non citizens right so to kind of address that a little bit so he talks about the concentration camp of course as we know but look at this um where when it is about um life life being uh, taken when on the one hand concentration camp which is like the gas chambers death camps you know the last point where you are total bare life so with that example of course when we think in today's society we think of refugee camps and rohingyas and you know adivasi lives most vulnerable most precarious but then if you look at say page 114 then we see that uh, what is the right in page 114 you will see in that para the the after in the fifth fourth fifth line you will see in modernity the principle of the sacredness of life is thus completely emancipated from sacrificial ideology the ideology of sacrifice that you take someone a living person and you sacrifice you kill that person um uh, that sacrificial ideology he is saying in modernity the principle of the sacredness of life is thus completely emancipated from sacrificial ideology so we have to understand the sacredness of our life you know not in terms of sacrificial ideology like oh you know there is someone on the margins homeless stateless is a skill that sacrificial and in our culture the meaning of the term sacred continues the semantic history of homo sapiens and not that of sacrifice so making a distinction between the logic of homo sapiens and that of sacrifice um and this is why the demystifications of sacrificial ideology so common today remain insufficient even though they are correct what confronts us today now look at this other sentence what confronts us today is a life that as such is exposed to a violence without precedent precisely in the most profane and banal ways our age is the one in which a holiday weekend produces more victims on europe's highways than a war campaign now you see here he is talking about everyday life you know you are going on a you know holiday weekend um uh, you are just uh, going on a normal pilgrimage to temples maybe so there is a stampede and you hundred people die uh so um so yeah you see suddenly we are out of the concentration camp you know uh and this thing you have to keep in mind that the concentration camp 
So what happened in the concentration camp? No. What happened in the concentration camp? He is saying what happened in the concentration camp and how Europeans are dying when they go on a holiday, weekend holiday. He is seeing some similarity between the two. Now you might say that is with the that that would be the most controversial, most monstrous thing to say, as though it's belittling the victims of Holocaust. That you are comparing the Holocaust of the Jews with those dying when they go on a holiday, pleasure seekers, adventure seekers, going to the beaches of Goa. And then they die while seeking pleasure. How can you compare that? So one has to understand then how and in what terms he understands the concentration camp. And look at the next para then. The wish to lend a sacrificial aura to the extermination of the Jews by means of the term Holocaust was from this perspective an irresponsible historiographical blindness. If you think that the Jews were just sacrificed there, you know, they just kill, killed directly, like the way you kill in a sacrifice. He says that that is a... The, the literal meaning of Holocaust is burnt offering. Yeah. That's the literal meaning. Yeah. It's a, so the, you see, you use just the word sacrificial aura. The sacrificial aura, that means the Rohingya or the Adivasi or the last man who is bombed in Gaza today, the Palestinian. Homeless, stateless. That killing is supposed to have an aura. I mean, that's the discourse he's challenging. <clears throat> oh, yes, Palestinians are getting killed. Oh my God, how can Palestinians be killed? You know, what is Israel doing? We must stop it. This is genocide. Oh my God, how can this happen? How can the world allow this to happen? Nagamini is laughing, hey, 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 you idiots, you haven't got the point. You know, why are you only looking at Gaza? It's happening everywhere. That's what he's saying. So, that entire aura of those killed in Gaza, there's an aura, right? That's why it makes big news and like students in American universities in London, they're getting agitated. But Nagamini is saying, you fool, you idiots. You are yourself that sacri you are you yourself are the bare life. You are seeing the bare life there. But you yourself are the bare life. So instead of people getting killed when they go on weekend holidays, you could have as well added students getting killed while while they put up their encampments at Columbia University. You know. Uh, <laughs> so there is no aura, you say. Because those killed in Gaza has an aura. You know, we get like, we think this is like, how can they do this? It has so much meaning. And it shows the true nature of capitalism, the true nature of imperialism, the true nature of this global capitalist order, that such a thing is happening in front of our eyes and Biden and uh, whoever, the United Nations cannot do anything about it. There's so much meaning into it. Is that what happened? Is that is is the killing in the Holocaust had this kind of? I mean, people attribute this kind of aura, and he's saying that's mistaken. The Jew living under the Nazism is the privileged negative referent of the new biopolitical sovereignty, and is as such a flagrant case of a homosaka in the sense of a life that may be killed but not sacrificed. So he's saying it is the privileged negative referent 
of the new biopolitical sovereignty which Agamemnon is proposing um, and is as such a flagrant case. It is a case of homosaka, he says, in the sense of a life that may be killed but not sacrificed. His killing, therefore, constitutes, as we will see, neither capital punishment. You see, capital punishment is a big thing. I mean, capital punishment is aura. Capital punishment is killing through an aura. There is an entire court, an entire like uh, sentences and jury and judges and entire uh, uh, the news, uh, the hangman has to be brought from somewhere and there is an entire tamasa around it. You know, there is an entire spectacle around it. There is an entire judicial process and what not. So what happened with the Jews is not capital punishment. Of course, that I don't think anybody is saying that. Um, his killing therefore constitutes, as we will see, neither capital punishment nor a sacrifice. That millions of Jews were sacrificed to the German nation. Millions of Muslims are rules, must be killed for the Hindu nation. So all the people who died in partisan in India, do you think they had a sacrificial aura? What do you think? They had a sacrificial aura. Do we attribute a sacrificial aura to it? But what is it? Do we? What is the narrative around it? How do we look at normally? Uh, sacrificial uh, aura hai usme? Uh, do we think that the nation, for the nation to emerge, so many people had to perish? Is there any meaning attributed to those killings? That's what sacrificial aura means, no? It's kind of thought of as a senseless thing, like, I mean, it's like not... Um, yeah, it is thought of as senseless, okay. Okay, let's look at the secular Nehru kind of narrative around the killings of the partisan. How do, how do they look at it? What you said, who does that? In which narrative is it like that? They are just the regarded senseless. Senseless killings are those maybe more of the... Who says that? Whose narrative is that? But it's not the Nehru kind of thing. What is Nehru kind of thing? I mean, I think he would... I don't exactly know what he would say, but the senseless... No, no, he means Nehru, yeah. Nehru is like, you know, the entire secular kind of thing. What would they say? Are, are no, 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 but the is the This should not be done. This is. Uh, Abhi tumne bola kaun bolta hai? This is uh, the senseless thing. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if Nehru don't say it, but certainly those on the left say it. But the means of the country, and all of this is like. Yeah, since that's right. That's what Nehru also would say. Nehru bhi to lefty to hai kya hai Nehru? Is hmm. is context mein? Hmm. Anna? So they say that, the senseless killings, you know, nobody wanted this and yet this happened. You are right, you know, it's senseless, there is no sacrificial aura around it, you know, it's just... Yeah, that's true, bolo bolo. How? Like Hindutva will say that. Hindutva will attribute a sacrificial aura. You know, itna mara Hindu mar gaya. Sab ja ke desh bana. Fir bhi ye Musliman nahi sudar rahe. Sacrificial aura hai na? Ki meaning hai uska, us death ka. हमको सबक सीखना चाहिए ये मुसलमान ऐसा करते हैं राइट सो यू विल सी दैट सो दिस व्हाट इज सेइंग 
He is killing, therefore, constitutes as we will see neither capital punishment nor a sacrifice, but simply the actualization of a mere capacity to be killed. Now he is going somewhere else. <laughs> But simply the actualization of a mere capacity to be killed, inherent in the condition of the Jew as such, that the Jew could be killed by anyone, you know, it was like most inconsequential death. So there is no sacrificial aura. The truth, which is difficult for the victims to face, but which we must have the courage not to cover with sacrificial veils is that the Jews were exterminated not in a mad and giant holocaust, but exactly as Hitler had announced, as lice, which is to say as bare life. When you kill someone as lice, then of course there is no aura, there is no meaning. You kill them as bare life. Right? The dimension in which the extermination took place is neither religion nor law, but biopolitics. Now this as lice. So people go to board a train in New Delhi station, they just stamp it, they, they die. It's like, like lice. There's no life is just taken, you know, and as well as not taken, you know. It is like no big deal. So you go on a uh, holiday weekend, people just die. You know, you take a vaccine thinking you will live long, protect yourself from a virus, you die because of the vaccine. Right? You die because they wanted to save you. So, during the coronavirus pandemic, as you know, a lot of people refused to get admitted to an hospital. Because they knew that you get admitted to a hospital, you are going to die. You know, that is the biopolitical capture. One is people are dying because they are not getting a hospital. But Dangambin is saying, no, that's not how people are dying. People are dying because they got the hospital. People are dying not because they have no rights, no citizenship, nothing, stateless, homeless, refugee. People are dying because they have rights, they have everything. And they are very nice and good life, they having a nice car, they going with the family for a weekend holiday, they die. So Jews died in the Holocaust, just like that, you know, uh, as lies. Um, so the, when he says the concentration camp, then now we know what it means. <laughs> I don't know whether he is convincing enough, but that's what he is saying. Um, let's read that other para also after that. If it is true that the figure proposed by our age is that of an unsacrificable life, that is or killing without sacrificial aura. So when he is saying, if it is true that the figure proposed by her is, is that of an unsacrificiable life. A meaning patai ni chalta hai sentence, so you know. Right? <clears throat> that has nevertheless become capable of being killed to an unprecedented degree. So killed without sacrifice. Right? Then the bare life of Homo Saka concerns us in a special way. Sacredness is a line of flight still present in contemporary politics, a line that is as such moving into zones increasingly vast and dark to the point of ultimately coinciding with the biological life itself of citizens. If today there is no longer any one clear figure of the sacred man, it is perhaps because we are all virtually, you see, we are all virtual. This woman is sacri. Mm -hmm. 
That's why there is no one clear figure of the sacred man who would be killed like lies, you know. Uh, because we are all in it. Okay. In a way, yes, yes. And he is also kind of lampooning that idea, you know. Because the line of flight is supposed to be like, kind of, it has a emancipatory side to it. Like you are exiting the matrix kind of thing. Uh, but um, that is not really possible. Okay, so um, now there are writers like Batai and others. He refers in this chapter called Threshold. Uh, we will not go into Batai, but he is critiquing Batai there. Georges Batai, the French uh, anthropologist, anarchist kind of person but extremely brilliant because Batai I think yeah works with this sacrificial that most killings even in modernity is, is sacrificial. Incidentally when you think of Marx, Marx uh, I would say Marx comes close to this Agamemnon notion. If you think of how Marx uh, conceptualizes uh, the way the worker is exploited, you know, then there is no sacrificial aura around it. It is, uh, it can be, we can say that uh, it is, uh, it is the model of the unsacrificable life, you know. Uh, so, in the in the labor process, there is that sphere we can say which is which is uh, which is which which is coterminous with that sphere of the homosaka, which is marked by you know can be killed but not sacrificed. You know uh, that kind of a uh, that kind of a uh, that kind of a um, uh, that kind of a space uh, where uh, there is <laughs> where there is no <laughs> um, where there is where the um, where uh, biopolitical power plugs into life you know, uh, in the most, uh, in the most um, inconsequential, non-oratic, you know, non-spectacular fashion, you know, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's most non-noticeable, you know, it's like you will miss it. <laughs> it's a, it's just like through vibe or something, you know. We use a digital nomadic term. Just through vibe. Just tumko dekke maine hypnotize kar diya. Kuch is type ka. Kuch nahi kiya. Sakar ke dekha rone lagi. मतलब एप्लीकेशन नहीं है ना मैंने तुम्हारे ऊपर चिल्लाया ना कुछ कराया या दैट्स अ उमसाक काइंड ऑफ थिंग ओके यू विल गो क्रेजी सून आई थिंक आई एम गिविंग यू क्रेजी एग्जांपल्स ओके सो टर्न टू 121 पेज 121 Now, there is a lot in this page 121 in this chapter, but let's just focus on this uh, just after that um, little quote from someone. Um, the contiguity between mass democracy and totalitarian states. And Sai will feel very nice again. Democracy and totalitarianism ka ek saath bola tha Sai ne. 
the contiguity between mass democracy and totalitarian states the contiguity right they very close to each other nevertheless does not have you see he does not get satisfied even with with that a lot of people will tell you that right that democracy and totalitarianism most discourses try to counterpose the two but actually you know there's no point counterposing because there is totalitarianism within democracy or there is you can even i don't know whether you can say there is democracy within totalitarianism but that is the first case most people would say and you already feel okay that's that's a good job i did by showing the true logic of democracy but of course agamben uh, will not be satisfied with that um uh, the contiguity between mass democracy and totalitarian states nevertheless does not have the form of a sudden transformation before impetuously coming to light in our century the river of biopolitics before impetuously coming to light in our century the river of biopolitics that gave homo sacer his life runs its course in a hidden but continuous fashion the hidden i was struggling with all kinds of words non noticeable non spectacular non erratic just means hidden uh the river of biopolitics that gave homo sacer his life you see it gives life not what akhil gupta is saying it takes life only poor akhil gupta peace be upon him that gave homo sacer his life runs its course in a hidden but continuous fashion it is almost as if starting from a certain point every decisive political event were double sided the spaces the liberties and the rights won by individuals in their conflicts with central powers like the great fundamental rights article 14 1921 of the indian constitution so that indira gandhi cannot impose emergency again and take away our fundamental rights thanks to nani palkiwala who fought in the famous kesavananda bharati judgment case and defended the basic structure of the constitution what do you say basic structure hai na constitution ka fundamental rights hai part of basic structure so those basic structure fundamental rights won by individuals in their conflict with central powers always simultaneously prepared a tacit but increasing inscription of individual lives within the state order prepared a tacit but increasing inscription of individuals lives individual lives are inscribed in those rights within the state order thus offering a new and more dreadful foundation for the very sovereign power from which they wanted to liberate themselves so you thought these fundamental rights will help you liberate yourself from centralized power but in the process you did you gave sovereign power a more dreadful foundation then what we should we should give away all the fundamental rights sai you should give up give up fundamental rights if it is like a carrot and stick approach ek hath se diya ek hath se le liya aur jo diya wo kuch bhi nahi hai jo liya wo bahut sara le liya to net loss bhi hai plus minus bhi nahi ho raha hai plus minus zero bhi nahi ho raha hai plus minus mein wo le hi raha hai net loss hai humko so we are submitting more to centralized power thus offering a new and more dreadful foundation for the very sovereign power from which they wanted to liberate themselves so the khilli uda raha hai bhai tumhara mazak kar raha hai tumhare sath from which they wanted to liberate themselves ha 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 emoji dalo usme acha acha emoji dalo ek aisa hota hai na they taking out the tongue aisa karke wo wala bhi dalo is ah the right to life writes a great michael fuko explaining the importance assumed by sex as a political issue to one's body to health to happiness to the satisfaction of needs and beyond all the oppressions and alienation the right to rediscover what one is and all that one can be this right 
which the classical juridical system was utterly incapable of comprehending was the political response to all these new procedures of power. The fact is that one and the same affirmation of bare life leads in bourgeois democracy to a primacy of the private over the public and of individual liberties over collective obligations and yet becomes in totalitarian states the decisive political criterion and the exemplary realm of sovereign decisions. He is making that distinction between democracy and totalitarian regimes and only because biological life and its needs had become the politically decisive fact is it possible to understand the otherwise incomprehensible rapidity with which 20th century parliamentary democracies were able to turn into totalitarian states and with which and with which this century's totalitarian states were able to be converted almost without interruption into parliamentary democracies. Oh my God, look at this now. How you could turn totalitarian states, what you regarded as, as totalitarian states till the other day, overnight they became democracies. How is that possible? Because the underlying logics were the same, he is saying. Chalo, I can teach no further today. I can only tighten my lace. My shoelace. Okay, we can stop here. So that's quite a handful, mouthful. I don't know what is happening in this course because I am still not able to come to the main that Omosaka chapter. I am getting frustrated now, you know. Yeah. So what we'll do, we'll take a break. I mean, I, I wanted to do these two chapters basically, you know, uh, which is the core uh, chapters. The actually, you know, the real heart of this his work is this chapter on ambivalence of the sacred, and the chapter after that, which is the core analytical part. No, uh, what I did today was the broad kind of framing of it because we were getting troubled again and again, and I was feeling that you know that thing is still not resolved about is he talking about killings on the fringes uh, you know on non-citizens stateless people or is he talking about everyday life and that's why i thought let's resolve that today 
but uh, this uh, but this was all about doing this um, chapter called uh, Homo Saka and we will answer the sacred and sacred life which is where he basically uh, you know gives his full rap which gets quoted all the time um, uh, everywhere um, um, Sorry? That Robert Yale Yeah. Robert Yale is that the ambivalence of the That the? Exists. Exists. Achha, yeah. That yeah. is misleading and that Yeah. 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 So this, this will remain uh, the sacred life, uh, these three chapters basically, Omosakar and um, this one. Um, basically, it is um, that's where I gave you that example of the pig, you know, sacrifice of the pig, that chapter basically. Um, yeah, but I would say let's stop here and uh, let's not rush, you know, because I want you to really be, you know, up to date to what we are doing. <coughs> um, so I would say this lecture today is you think through, you go over it again in your mind, process it. Um, this is absolutely amazing, like things that we just pointed out today. And, uh, and you guys are lucky, PhD course, and I don't know for some reason this department also looks relaxed, we could actually do this. And Nasreen also seems fine. She seems too encouraging to me. Yes, 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 please, please carry on. Carry on. <laughs> uh, and also, I think if it was my own course, I don't think I would have been this relaxed either. You know? I'd also have thought, oh, you know, I have to finish this. So, uh, so this is a special, this is in fact like the bear life kind of little thing, you know, where we cannot be killed. You know, or we can be killed with impurity because this class has no statutory kind of status, particularly today, which is also outside the timetable. Nor are we, I think, important enough to be sacrificed. You know, uh, if we are maybe having a class in Savarkar, maybe, uh, but we are not important enough to be sacrificed. Uh, so, this is a special circumstance which allows us this. So please make the most of it um, and uh, so that still remains. Um, we'll see when we can do that. Um, but uh, because the analytical technical part is very important. Um, so in the other chapters, from where I read out and all, he's then, you know, he then goes into other directions. And that's when it becomes really clear. If it was some other more insecure writer, they would have put those things initially, you know, and really clarified and trying to do this and trying to do that, you know, already pleading not guilty. But Agamben doesn't really care, you know. He says, ki tumko samajna hai, samjo. Uh, so this is basically what he says. Uh, 
And you can imagine, it feels like he's undermining the victims of the Holocaust, um, you know, or in today's context, it might mean that he's undermining the victims of the bombing in Gaza. Uh, but how? Why is why are the Jews offended? Because don't the Jews themselves understand that you know, they were not they were killed like Nazis? It seems like they themselves understand this, which is why now they're like you have to be completely secure and all that. It seems like they know that they were killed like lice. I don't think they themselves would agree that they were like sacrificed or something for the German state or whatever or that. So I think they themselves are yeah. they don't believe they were killed like lice. That's why Israel is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like compared. No, but that meaning part is also there, no, Sai. That oh the Holocaust is like we should never forget it, you know? That kind of a, what now from Agamemnon's perspective looks like an illegitimate inflation of its importance. But otherwise we legitimately think that is so important. It is true that it has that kind of a meaning and uh, which we should never forget. And, and it is like something which we want to erect memorials for and all of that. But I think Agamemnon is trying to say that this entire thing that, oh, history, this kind of a horrendous thing should not repeat again in human history. That kind of puts the focus on these kind of spectacular kind of killings and distracts us from the, yeah, from the scene of bear life, you know. Uh, that's why where we were reading there, you know, he was saying that, that every day this is going on. What is that? Can we again go back to that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's where he wants to identify it in an everyday life, at an everyday level. 114. If today there is no longer any clear figure of the sacred man, because it's normal, it's democracy, everybody is having a lovey-dovey life, watching Netflix movies, putting nice pictures on Instagram, you know, right? So, of course, there is no clear figure of the sacred man today who is going to be killed. It is, but because the, that's because we are all virtually ominous sacri. We are all humans who are ready for sacrifice or something, you know. Uh, so I think he's uh, is really uh, maybe there is a politics of to make it sound more light and liberal and you know and non agamemnon like we might say oh there, there is a politics of memorialization of genocides and holocausts you know you might some other people might put it in that way that you talk about uh, Gujarat 2002 and Sikh riots of uh, 1984 to kind of distract from what is happening in an in everyday basis or something. How do you take the strokes? Eight strokes, but 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 yeah, but but people who get taken to hospitals after each stroke, no, you would focus on that. The, I mean, in a way, Foucault is also saying that, no, these prison, I mean, hospital, schools, these are all ways in which you are taken in, you are captured. Um, so, it is the, it is bare life which is taken through this, um, through, through the founding of this space for the Homo Sacer. Homo Sacer is the figure, you know, and bare life is the bare life. The life which is the, what is that, um, the bios and zoo, zoo or something, yeah, 
Yeah, which is the which is the which is bear life between the Zoe Zoe okay yeah, so I always mistake that I can never get it right so um, so uh, that's why the the pandemic was a major thing for Agamemnon not the fact that the virus came but the great concern showed by the powers that be and everyone that we must save lives. What is the save lives? We must save lives. So the government is very anxious. Oh, we must save lives. Please don't go out. You will get the virus, or you will pass on the virus. There must be social distancing. We must save lives. What is the save lives? The save lives is the. That's how the. That's the. That's how the figure of the Homo Saka gets created. the save life and it is only months later or slowly but even at that point but very few people were saying that no they actually want to kill you you know this is not the save life is actually to kill you right or to sell vaccines or bill gets wants to sell his vaccines and all of that so the agambenian kind of notions are already there in circulation it's not that agamben will give us but it feels like fringe groups or conspiracy theorists or right wing guys uh, you know i mean right wing as in the kind of right wing you have in the us the indian right on this question the indian right and the indian left are just one and the same in india right in terms of oh, their approach towards vaccines and towards uh, the the what is it called the medical industry pharmaceutical industry the pharmaceutical industry uh the left and the right in india are just the same but in the us and others the right are like really going against glaxo and all this pfizer and all these companies right um because they are the the pfizer is the death camp you know it's that kind of thing say pfizer is the death camp camp The hospitals and hospitals are a death camp. We know that. During coronavirus, people refused to be taken to the hospital. They knew that if you give the, your patient to the hospital, मुझे तो लाश ही मिलेगा उसका. But if you are not getting the hospital. entire opposition parties and all are saying government is not able to arrange hospital beds for patients and that the discourse is again something else the discourse is again the liberal rights and liberties wala discourse social justice discourse people are getting deprived of hospital beds and people must be given hospital beds and people are also saying yes please give us hospital beds on the other hand the same people are saying that no i don't want to be taken to the hospital again in our my colony where i live there is one family they are you know doing this uh, they 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 live in that huge bungalow in the servants quarters and all so uh, this guy he went to great lengths to because unka beta ko lag gaya virus they are saying it's positive what positive was it called at the time rtpcr no something yeah rtpcr right yeah so uh, then um, uh, he went called idhar udhar so much he made a lot of efforts finally got a bed in gurgaon hospital bed but when the bed was found and then the taxi is called the family said oh nahi 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 chhod dete ha kyunki log bol rahe pata nahi hospital mein to fir pata nahi kya hota hai घर में हम लोग कर लेंगे जो करना है हॉस्पिटल में तो फिर जो हो रहा है मतलब अलग ही हो रहा है But the traditional left is saying that okay, fine. Ye jaldi corona ka jo bhi chakra hoga, to fir jaake state will get you know breached more of these things. Or apna power is cut kar diye, logo jail mein dal diye. But I think the government's point is that the inscription part is like inscrib
that comes after the situation. Right? So things become way more sacred, life becomes sacred more. Right? So that's happening after the whole you know, COVID scheme. Now we are way more conscious of life and all that. I don't think his point exactly is that you know hospital may chakkar or it's really the thing that's happening after that. How are we live from being No, save life that ideology is already there, no. What do you mean after? After as in the normalization of this, like post COVID situation. Mm. Not really about you know how hospital is kind of killing us and all that, but it's really how uh, No, the fact that we want to save life, no? There is so much. He's saying if people are dying, let them die. I mean, all this concern being showed, no? Is really, you know, it's not really about. He's not even saying that it's not about saving lives, they actually want to kill you. It is getting control over life, no? So vaccines came and that is a way to control you. But not control you in terms of take your liberties and freedom. It's like put a chip inside you and then say, okay, now you go do whatever, enjoy life, go. So it's not really subjugation model. So they put you a vaccine and then you're free, no? But the vaccine is there. And why was the vaccine given to you? Saving lives. They want to save you. Um, right? Um, so, um, so he is saying that you are the bare life there, no? You are the bare life. You are the Zoe. You are the bare life there. I mean, not that the vaccine was needed for that to be true. Even with the coronavirus, even with the vaccine, that thing is always going on. That kind of a non-sacrificial power that you are You are, your inclusion in the biopolitical order is through an exclusion. As in you are exempted, you will not be sacrificed, there is no sacrificial side to it. Uh, there won't, you won't be legally killed or anything. You are free, no? You are, you are, anybody can, you can be killed means that you are also beyond human law. Um, you are uh, the kind of ban. You are you are banned means that you are free. You know, uh, it is in the relationship of abandonment that this is happening, of, of banning you. Banishing you. Um, so, so that space is always there, no? So it's not that like, and that's where you would not agree with Foucault and or with Deleuze. They, it seems like with Foucault and Deleuze, no, the 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 capture of life has to be is you have to constantly show that it is taking place like a real transfer of energy or blood or something, you know. Uh, but with Agamben, it is the space which opens up in the theory of sovereign power. That space is always there, um, in which you exist, which is that of the homo saka, that is uh, you, there is no sacrificial aura or there is no kind of uh, legal kind of sanction against you, right? 
so that ban the ban is what we enjoy no we enjoy the ban the ban is not in that sense oh how am i why am i abandoned no <laughs> you know uh, so um so that's why it's in a relation of abandonment and that is where the rights and liberties and all that is coming um uh, right otherwise you your formal rights will be violated your formal rights will not be violated the liberties and freedoms are not taken away um you know um your liberties and freedom are not taken away and yet there is that uh space within which you can be killed like a lice that is i think what is actually right i mean if your freedom and rights are taken away then it will be a sacrificial or at the killing no like the way you know uh, um uh, people in gaza are being killed the rights and freedoms are also taken away it is actually like a uh, you know the gaza civilians they don't even have formal rights freedoms you know and they are being killed um like lies so that is the model that is the model is saying even though it is not the model because elsewhere where by political power works rights and liberties are available so in that sense the gaza one is not the model but yet he is saying it is the model to the extent that you know we also are treated the same way to the extent that we are bare life right uh, that's why the constitution camp can become a nomos for a society in which people die more people die when they go on a weekend holiday than in war campaigns and i think this is largely true of the west but also maybe countries like india where it is actually true and we often also have said this in our little conversations in the family and with friends that more people in india die out of road accidents then out of the corona virus more people die out of uh, maybe malaria and tb and mosquito bites than from uh, corona virus so why this hula bulao around the corona virus we have often said this so we are all agamemnians you know actually <laughs> it's just that we say it in such a passing way and in such a private moment or with such a close friends or in such a kind of uh, nice uh, conversation we really speaking your mind that we next moment we forget it we don't build on it so i will not say i am doing phd here on all this political theory rights and all of that let me start from this thing that i have i really believe in my instinctual understanding is not all that you will say i read this book and the orals is saying this and the fanna is saying that now what should i say he is not going by his by what he actually believes in with the agamman i think agamman really is able to do that jo dil mein lag raha hai na wo bolna bahut mushkil hai bol ke dekho isse ye kitna kuch bolta hai lekin actually ye dil se bol raha hai ki nahi you don't know isne ek paper bhi likha hai isse sab pe migrant workers ko leke isne ye baitha hai yahan aake ye bahut le raha hai yahan se सबसे ज्यादा यही ले रहा है पूरा इज सकिंग द वाइटल एनर्जी आउट ऑफ द लेक्चर सो द एन सागम मैन गॉट सो यू नो चार्ज अप ड्यूरिंग द कोरोना वायरस एंड ऑल्सो इंसिडेंटली इज इटालियन एंड द the corona virus lockdown really started with the italian lockdown and right early on right at the beginning i think it was already like 
May 2020, already Italy is under a lockdown or maybe even before that, March I think. Already Agamemnon has already written like the, the next, uh, like in the, into one or two weeks into the lockdown in Italy, he's already written those articles, little small, small articles. Very provocative. And basically carrying on this same perspective. And it was, I, I think it is the most important articles written on the coronavirus are those three, four small block pieces that he wrote. Otherwise, such a huge coronavirus happened all over the world. Not a single article is worth reading. I haven't found any. Please send me if you think there is some really good piece written on this. Yes, yes, huh? He wrote 35 or 40 blogs in that day. Mm. Acha. I have read those three, four. And this is like absolutely stunning. Even like these people like, who is that Sapiens, Sapiens writer? Yeah. yeah, maybe they can write something, but I don't know. He looks like just a popular guy. Yeah, but of course it won't have the sharpness of Agamemnon. But even like kind of okay kind of uh, uh, writings I haven't seen. And Agamemnon has really like cracked the entire thing. Small pieces, you know. And but people started having entire journal issues on that, on Agamemnon's this thing, <laughs> intervention. Then they wrote long, long articles attacking Agamemnon. Oh my God, long articles attack karke. He is not getting it. He is uh, become like a right wing troll. Um, he is like a conspiracy theorist. What not? And he didn't even write, in, write it in English or New York Times. No big place, no big important journal. Just small blogs. Like you write your Facebook posts. No. He did not care. He did not think, he, oh, we should publish. Should, I mean, he's a big writer, so he can get published anywhere he wants. Uh, at least one article he could have gotten in New York Times or Washington Post. But I think he purposely like, thought, I am not going to like. These are just useless use this idiots there, you know, I'm not going to pop this in the Guardian or something. You know, who cares? So everybody got agitated. How can Agamben say this? I think Zizek responded to some of the things he said. I think critical inquiry, please check it. Critical inquiry, I think there was a debate on Agamben. After the coronavirus thing. And Zizek is, in that sense, I think I like his spirit, you know. He does not ignore his fellow scholars, you know. He does not act as though nobody exists. He refers to everyone. Huh? <laughs> so he referred to Agamben, even though Agamben is like an outlier guy, you know. He's like a, he's regarded as a crazy guy, you know, like crazy thoughts. But frankly, I mean, uh, I felt inner peace, you know, after reading that Agamben articles. Until now, I feel that. Because I don't think I would have been able to, you know, think, forget about writing, think about it with that clarity, but he put it out there. And then you read and then, okay, yes, you know, somebody has said it out there. That kind of thing. Because it is so big, the lockdown, the coronavirus, that it smashes you, no? You cannot like question this. You just have to fall in line. Vaccine lena hai to lena hai bhai. Koi usme option nahi ki mein nahi lena hai, mujhe nahi lena hai. Even though this time I was in Calcutta, Calcutta again is another crazy people are there, no? Right? Calcutta I made a good bunch this time, quite a few people who have not taken the vaccine. Calcutta is not like your Delhi or like your Bombay or like your any other city. Calcutta, the Agamemnon spirit is alive in Calcutta. This guy I met, he was like saying, yeah, I was, 
we were going every day out because we knew that we have to get used to the vaccine if we don't go out then we might have to take the vaccine so those guys have figured it out that, that, those were the reports that yeah the of the yeah so they're going out every day and the same place where they used to meet for their chai their adda place the chai place is gone but they you were saying you know i used to make tea for everyone and i had this huge flask and i used to carry it and all our guys would come and we'd hang out there if the police used to catch me then i would say oh, i'm going to the hospital you see i have a flask here my patient is there सताक्षी मैडम बोलो बहुत सोच रही है सताक्षी बोल नहीं रही है सुरभि बताओ तो लाइक एवरी गुड थिंग you know when it when we come towards the end there's the remainder so the remainder is that chapter which never happened um but uh, i am very much on this planet you are also here so we'll have another session sometime uh but i would like you to um um you know we will little bit get used to this crazy thought process you know <laughs> you have to act and behave as though you are from a different planet that takes some time <laughs> uh and uh, sai is i am very scared of sai right now cuz i don't know what sai is thinking uh uh cuz so but uh, i think we'll uh, do the the analytical chapters also because uh, because that's where the the academically speaking that is important to get the analytical part um because you see all these things that we discussed a uh, state of nature and then law um and then it get absorbed uh state of nature into the sovereign and that's what makes the sovereign sovereign that's what allows the sovereign to decide on the state of exception but that's till kalsmit that's kalsmit but beyond that no is agamben right and then the reference to walter benjamin uh walter benjamin and that's what walter benjamin is so crucial here you know walter benjamin gives him the actual insight you know uh benjamin gives him the actual insight like this sacredness of life that everybody talks about you know things as though oh but life itself is not important you know there were rights and liberties and freedom and expression and this that and the other but life itself <coughs> if there is no life there is nothing it's the life the vital life <coughs> or the vitality of life so benjamin way back is already pointed that out you know <laughs> and in a way you know the rise of fascism is actually that <clears throat> world war first world war you know the way the discourses then changed also a lot of people getting killed um then the politics of blood and soil race this is nazism 
is very much part of that, right? And uh, and Benjamin is already able to see that coming. <clears throat> Politics of blood and race, how that segues into life itself. Because blood is there. So when, okay, when for example, Golwa Walker, right, who says that this is Pitri Bhumi and what is that other Bhumi? Two Bhumis, no? Pitri Bhumi and uh, what is the other Bhumi? Fatherland and Holy Land. Ah. RSS Golwalkar bol raho fir bhi nahi padhe ho kya kuch bhi Golwalkar nahi padha ya padhne ka bhi kya zarurat hai sun ke pata chalta hai usme blood wala chakkar hai na usme ki this is a hindu the father. Of course, later RSS changed the position a little bit and said, oh no, Hindu and Muslim DNA is the same. That also they said recently. We don't know whether that is out of pressure from Modi ji or something who wanted to improve his global statesman image. They said, oh sorry, sorry, galti ho gaya. Lekin yaar, Hindu or Muslim ka DNA to ek hi hai. To koi dikkat nahi hai. Hum saath rahe sakte hai. I don't know, maybe they are giving up on Golwalkar. Right? Because that is more like Golwalkar, no? Rather than Savarkar. Jag jau, bhai, tum log jag jau. Isa nahi chalega. Okay, so okay. Let's uh, end it here. Exception to the exception. Because the exception is where the sovereign power kicks in, no? But, and that's why a lot of, say, uh, people in business and um, others, they don't like it. They think this is not right. This is populism, they will say, no? Because they like the exception. And in fact, a lot of capital works as exception, like even like, otherwise you see, no, like big capital, they're always quiet. You don't see much, uh, they don't make much noise in the public sphere. You see all these stupid politicians fighting it out, some elections, making a big win, cry, who's going to win. But no matter who wins, the same guy wins. And the guy who actually is the winner will chip up back then. Big capital, no? They don't speak. They don't speak. All these uh, debate, uh, you know, contestation about uh, displacement from land. But the one who is taking the land, they never talk. So Tata Nano plant is coming up in Singur in uh, West Bengal. So all these Trinamool and left and all these intellectuals and BJP, they are, they are like big go and cry. But the one who is going to get it, no? Tata, as though they are dead. Birla, you don't hear of them, they never speak. You know, they are, so that they are, in fact, their very existence is the exception. You know, so there is too much of over exposure of, you know, poor people, you interview them, 
there are too much everywhere you see the chatter from the poor and the deprived and the marginalized but the big bosses you can't interview them you don't get access also no so in a way there is also the exception <laughs> so it is to control their power the exception to the exception so the gram swaras uh, gram sabha directly affects the land grab of say big mining companies which happens as an exception usually so to control that exception you have gram sabha which and that's why big companies they finally they want to take over land and gram sabha meeting happens and they say we are not giving you land you know and it is also like a parallel power the abandonment and also the ban written abandonment but the ban yeah we talked about the squirrel or even the pigeon more the squirrel because that's the space between which is not fully outside not fully inside you know those spaces window sill and all that's where the squirrels are staying or birds also they make nests not completely inside not in outside in the trees or something but they want like the the point zone of indistinction no <laughs> i was giving you that topological sense so theek hai um so out of the state of nature by excluding the state of nature you found the law you find found the civil society but again there has to be a way in which the state of nature again must be included you know right so and that's where by politics comes life must again be captured um it's like you have ai but you have ai but again you look for the human will work with the ai you know so there's a lot of focus on ai and digital use and all but ultimately you want the human again you know to make the ai happen right so uh, so you are coming out of the human you come to the machine but machine to without the human the machine is again nothing you know it's a kind of thing you come out of nature state of nature the new sovereign power then of course the state of nature is absorbed in the sovereign that's why sovereign can act with impunity because it is the state of nature now um but then if you are um directly kind of trying to well then i give you get angry at some you know tumne mera khoon choos liya खून तो चूसना ही पड़ेगा ना खून तो चूसना पड़ेगा ना बिना खून चूसे तो कुछ नहीं होगा मेन तो खून है मेन तो लाइफ है ना यू वॉन्ट सम लाइफ विदाउट दैट इज द लाइफ एनर्जी द वाइटल एनर्जी उसके बिना तो कुछ नहीं होना है
like facebook wagera we they want attention of a real human that's why it's always checking whether it's a robot or a human and you have to constantly prove that you are a human because it is sucking blood out of you no that's what when i look at a screen right ஒரு மசின் லர்னிங் the machines learn ultimately from real humans so uh, so you found the political order coming out of nature and then uh, but then you want nature again so instead of nature then you might say it's absorbed in the sovereign sovereign can act with impunity sovereign can act as though it is not bound by laws it decides in the state of exception but that's not enough because you have to suck the blood you know the sovereign cannot just you know this thing that sovereign will decide on the state of exception and do some killings here and there suspend the usual laws extrajudicial killings that's not enough you know blood has to be <laughs> sucked <laughs> on a day to day every day level how is that possible it is possible that's what is going on uh but how does that happen right and that's what agamben is trying to figure out uh i mean what is the space that allows that what is the charact- i mean how that happens in a way i mean let's say the technical aspect of it lot of it is there in foco and blues right it happens to the panopticon or capillaries and like the biological biopolitical kind of an aspect you know uh, that is already captured the techniques and mechanisms of power you know that is already captured uh, but uh, what is the character of uh the political system what is the character of uh, sovereign power the role of uh, human rights the what is the citizen uh, all of this right within that entire uh discourse or paraphernalia of constitutional rights and all of that uh, where is this uh space now uh, where is the where is the uh, this uh, <laughs> this uh, uh this um, where the where life itself is um, captured um, where is this happening you know how is that possibility uh what is the where does the space for that arise how does it arise you know so there are uh gaps there are exceptions there are absences there are those uh as though there are null points where this happens you know it's like you are walking on a street and then one cctv camera captures you fully and then there is another but from one to the other there is a little gap kind of thing you know <clears throat> or there is a gap in the thing like there is a you know those uh, 
in the in the, the river or in the you know there are those little uh, yeah there are those little things no going on this is a middle point the absence point you know uh, that's where the thing happens uh, so that is like a like a non presence kind of a thing right that's where the thing uh, takes place where and that's why it's a non application of the law where it is it is uh, um where there is a oh we don't know what is going on you know so the way i get 1500 rupees from that lala ji again no i don't know i i don't know really okay i didn't check oh you you gave uh, return me more money oh lala ji sorry <laughs> and i might be really uh really genuine and correct because he was supposed to give me 150 rupees right i gave him 200 rupees and i bought something for 50 rupees but 150 it's quite possible there's a little mistake you make and he gives me back 1500 you thought 150 can become 1500 no in your mind and i am a very good trustworthy guy <laughs> whatever it he has returned i put it in my pocket you know so the so that uh, gap that absence that non application that non cognizability that non law you know uh, that's the thing. now <clears throat> um um now let's do one thing let's um and then of course what we talked about um the thing about the sacred and what is the sacred is the accursed the goat which will be sacrificed is a sacred goat you know uh the flower which we will uh you know which we will offer to god only the sacred flowers get plucked like that <laughs> you know their life is cut short <laughs> um right uh, so anything which is sacred there is this ambivalence that the sacred is also the cursed you know uh, i am sure those who are is toppers are also cursing themselves for being the topper you know right Uh, that's how you have great stories and movies you know so that you are having a great life everything you are rich and all but actually you are alone there is no one for you right <laughs> it's a you are so sacred so sacred that you are you have no one to talk to you know um you will become like uh, janvi kapoor who has everything in life and yet also she had nothing so she did not have any real experience of life so she joins a course a uh, filmmaking course and when the interviewer asks her why did you join the filmmaking course of course in europe or some london america she said no you know i could never step out in in india because uh, everybody knows me so i wanted to get a real feel of the street that's why i'm joining the course there I don't need to study filmmaking. I am Bollywood. Filmmaking institutes can come to me, right? I don't need to join a filmmaking course. I am the Kapoor family. You know, several filmmaking course run out of my bedroom. So she is sacred. She is celebrated. She is a celebrity. Every day, people are offering flowers. at her altar at her feet and yet she is cursed 